$150 million case against Fiat Chrysler because of the issue with the fuel tank. Jeb, welcome to the show. It's great to have you here. We've been talking about your fam your family you're representing and little Remy uh, Walden who was uh, killed in this accident. Tell us about this family from your point of view that you represented. What happened in this case? Well, first about the family. Uh, they have been an honor to represent. As a lawyer, these are the types of clients you dream about. Uh, they're good folks and they're tough. Um, you probably know this, Jerry, but this, uh, this verdict was the first uh, case that Chrysler ever allowed to go to trial involving post-collision fuel-fed fire, basically a fire following rear impact in these Jeeps with rear tanks. And the reason for that is it's tough to do. Um, going all the way through trial, we had just finished a two-week trial after about three years of litigation. Going through all that, so is it's hard long. On that's for sure, Jeb. But uh, you must have been pretty confident in your case uh, to to go to a jury trial. Look, I want you to tell me. Uh, Chrysler is saying that the fault lies with the people who ran into the rear of the vehicle. How do you respond to that? Chrysler knows what every American with any common sense knows, and that is that rear impacts happen. It's one of the most common kinds of collision out there on the road. Uh, most people have been involved in or know someone who has been involved in one of these wrecks. The real issue, though, the first and the fundamental rule of gas tank design is this. If the crash doesn't kill you, you should not burn. Put it a different way, oh. if your wreck doesn't kill you, your car shouldn't either. And that's the problem with these Jeeps, is that foreseeable rear impacts can have these horrific consequences. Well, and they and, took Remington Walton's life. And, of course, what life. we've seen out of Chrysler is they have redesigned these things so that the gas tank isn't in the back where it's so vulnerable. Is that a tacit admission that there was something wrong with the original design? Well, I think so. And, and I believe our jury, if they were here to speak, would also think so. Chrysler interestingly denies that. Um, that's one of the things that's so frustrating about this issue is Chrysler's repeated denials that there is any problem. One of the crucial parts of our case was showing that Chrysler knew there was a danger and failed to issue any warning about the danger. Now, the evidence of the danger is strong and it's common sense, and I think you just spoke with Ms. Claybrook about some of that. Um, but Chrysler's refusal to, refusal to acknowledge the danger and to issue a warning is really troublesome. Well, In I fact, assume uh, Sergio that, Marcioni I, I assume has said over and over again that these Jeeps are, quote, absolutely safe, end quote. And, and, that's and just I not believe true. that you had Sergio Marcioni testify in your trial, uh, and he was, I guess, remote, uh, which is interesting. Do you have a bunch of people calling you now and saying, okay, we want to sue too, or are you going to have a class action? Where does this go from here? Where it goes from here is, is tough for me to say. It depends on individual people and individual cases. Um, I will say this, that the evidence we've been able to gather in this case, I hope will prove helpful to other victims um, of these Jeep fires. I'm going to tell you, this little boy, Remington Walden, so adorable. Uh, it's just heartbreaking to hear that story. Look at that picture. Goodness. Jeb, thank you. Appreciate your time. Thank you, Jerry.